Mann. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with none other than Mr. Post Rain, Paul Marshall here. Yeah, man. Yeah, and we are in your neck of the woods. Yes. You live like 35 minutes away. That's unbelievable. I had no idea. I really didn't even know where y'all were other than YouTube, right? We all live on the telly land. That's right. <laughs> so it's pretty cool getting to meet up with, I'm fanning out over here, you know, hanging out with these guys, but uh, taking it all in because we're here at the NFBA, yep. uh, the National Frame Building Association. Yep. Uh, my first time here. Yeah, it's what governs all of post frame construction. They have design manuals, and I mean, it, it was fun talking to you yesterday about how you build, how versus we build. It's yeah, fascinating. So me too. Like I'm here really to kind of glean uh, and see where some of these different build types uh, come into play, right? Yeah. Like, at what point do I need to be Paul? And at yep. what point do I need to be Josh? And where's yep. that drawing line, you know, between uh, zip codes? Yeah, you know, and uh, it's I pretty think, interesting. I think there'll be some traveling in our future for sure. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm pumped to see how you guys do it, and I've always been fascinated with the post tension slabs. Yeah, I've done a lot of research on it, but I'd like to see it in person and, well, and kind of the steel frame. How you, you know, the big thing in Texas, is like we have such a expansive clay soils sure. and all of the different types of soil, so we don't have any real consistency i've got exactly. either i got a lot of rock over here i got this black black land mm -hmm. uh, clay yep. and uh so by and large what we're doing a lot of times is that the post tension yeah. which uh you know i'm, I'm trying to understand because i'm i mean obviously been immersed into our texas building sure uh and and i'm looking at what you guys are doing and of course i love the simplicity yeah so we're we primarily build barnuminiums, post frame barnuminiums, and so kind of my philosophy has been to make this process as simple as possible and make it the most cost effective and efficient for our client. So I have a pretty good system. Most of our our homes are built on piers, which I know some people get freaked out about that. We do do continuous foundations. I built on ICF foundations, just regular concrete, you know, yeah, you know, uh, footings and, and frost walls. But typically we do piers and we run frost protection down and under our slabs. What's interesting about it is like for us, when, when you say piers, it just means extra money for us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of yeah. like, but to, to that to be pretty much yeah. what you start with, right? Yeah, so basically for the most part, I can get away with a 18 to 20 inch pier as far as um, that being able to support the load of the home. And so, oh. That's a third of concrete per hole is all. So okay. we're looking at 50, 60 bucks maybe in concrete for okay. each pier. So, you know, a typical build, we might have 40 piers, so that's easy math. It's 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 really that's cost effective cool. way. The big thing we have here in the Midwest is frost protection. So what we do is we run a two inch EPS foam, two feet in the ground is where we have to do to yeah. protect ourselves from frost. All of our homes have hydronic heating, so we run two inch underneath. And the insulation I use um, has vapor barrier built into it, terminicide in it, so it protects you from insects, all that stuff. Yeah. And then I spray three inch closed cell on all of our walls, which attaches that to go down in the ground. So we have very few thermal transport points Interesting. in our buildings. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we're using a lot of closed cell, especially with our steel sure. and some of those aspects, but understanding where, you know, that makes yeah. sense uh, versus going to different types of insulation. Yeah. And, uh, but I like the I like the spray foam too. Yeah. <laughs> so no, there's and there's the great thing about this is there's more than one way to get to the finish yeah. line, and you got to think about you know your clientele, what is their budget. So like I I'm just trying to build the best house inside my client's budget that I can. Yeah. And, and focusing on the really important things. Yeah, and I think we we're uh, we're in the same boat. Like for me, it's like being a builder, having a philosophy of building. Yeah in your area or your climate zone or wherever you're at, I think is number one, right? Like, and to not leave a wake of problems behind sure. us. Absolutely. So that you can build a system that, that works. And I think I think that's important for all of you know, your viewers and my viewers, especially ones that are building with you and they're building with me is, you, you have to be cognizant of what your realistic budget is and what you can actually work. Cause there's a lot of information. There's a lot of amazing products that yeah. I would love to incorporate in every every yeah. build. Yeah. It's just not it's not feasible or practical sometimes. Or practical, right? right? Like 
Long There's just things that it just drive costs way up. Right. It will give you maybe a little bit better result, but I feel like the product we put out yeah. is really efficient. Yeah. It's really comfortable and people are happy with it. So you're you're you kind of got a little display here. This yeah. is pretty cool yeah. uh, of the simplistic yeah. design of what you do more routinely. Uh, can you kind of give me a little bit of breakdown of of uh, yeah? So we got typically we use three ply or four ply columns depending on the sidewall heights. Um, it's kind of how we decide that. And then we have two by twelve grade board. And then we use two by six girks, two foot on center, all the way up. And then, you know, we have trusses, eight foot on center, so. Eight foot, so yep. kind of like I do with the steel, you have yeah. yours on eight foot spans. Yep, with an eight foot span, we can run two by four purlins, two foot on center, on edge. If you drop down to like a four foot on center truss, you have to run, then you have to run headers to carry your trusses. And so immediately that gives you a versatility where if you wanted to put deck board, you can put deck board. Sure. If you didn't put deck board, you really could not do that if it was yeah, just a barn. If it's just a barn, yeah. I, I mean, I always recommend if you're, even if you're gonna have a barn, you need to do something to protect yourself from that condensation issue. Okay. Um, Cause if, you know. With the, it's, with the metal With roof, the bare right? metal, right? So there's, there's, a, there's options out there. There's drip stop, you can put some, there's, barriers you can put underneath your steel to keep it. Um, I like to run OS, you know, at least half inch OSB on all our roofs. Yeah. Because it eliminates that problem. It yeah. gives you a lot of structural integrity. I think it makes your building look better too. No matter what you do, if you run yeah. bare steel, you're gonna see those purlins. Yeah, that's There's right. gonna be a little bit of a dip, and right. I don't like that. Some people, it doesn't matter, but if you really start yeah, driving that, around, you that see That substrate it. really gives you a nice kind of a, a smooth yeah. transition for your roof panels yep. and all that, which, I'm a fan. I mean, I really am. Uh, we, we try to figure out, okay, what are ways that we could practically incorporate going to a deck system over our roofs. Sure. And that's kind of what we're here uh, trying to learn a little yep. bit more, even about this build style, this practice, to see if we couldn't glean and yep. maybe even participate in some of the post frame style even down yeah. in Texas. But, I mean, I would love to know if yeah. if this is if this is possible where you are, right? Yeah, me too. Because if it's possible, I mean, it, it's... I believe it is possible because I know that, that there's a lot of folks that are already doing it yeah. uh, in, in certain parts of Texas. Um, but really kind of exploring the ideas with the foundation and how you guys are, are handling Just, those things. I mean, I'm fascinated, like, how much concrete that is. And I yeah. understand that's because of your expansive soils and everything. Because we'll do, we have builders up here that will do... Uh, monolithic slabs, which is similar, except there's no, you don't have all the grade beans and all that in there. So yeah. that's a lot less concrete. I mean, you got from the looks of that, you're pump, pumping a lot of concrete in. It's a lot of concrete, and uh, you know, it's kind of like on that waffle pattern where we got uh, 10 inch wide grade beams that are 24 inch to 36 inch, sometimes even 42 inches deep. Sure. Uh, going on eight foot offsets all the way across the whole foundation, including our porches, including yeah. uh, the shop areas and the living. So, because it's all a complete engineered foundation, yeah. primarily because of the whole I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, that, soil. just thinking about that's scary, but you know, that's the thing, <laughs> knowledge gives you power, and like, yeah. that's why I like, yeah. I like, would love to visit you and just yeah. kinda well, we're gonna it, do see, that. See yeah. it firsthand because I like I like being knowledgeable about you yeah. know, why you do what you do in different parts of the country. You know. Yeah. Well, you guys let us know if you think we should uh, do some more collaborations here. But yeah. uh, what, I'm gonna come to Iowa. He's gonna come to Texas. And... Yeah. Whether they think they we should or not. I, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna I'm do in. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no. So. Ultimately speaking, the simplicity is really attractive. Yeah. Um, now, what about like on engineering when it comes to winds and um, things like that? For the most part, there are some jurisdictions that require engineering, um, like the National Frame Builder Association. There is, there's our, they already have a design manual for post frame that gives you, hey, how do I size my footings? What are the criteria of my, tr what my trusses should carry? Yeah. Post spacing, all that's kind of already done for you. And we're, we're using engineered products, so this column has already been engineered. Right. And that's there's right. Already, there's already documentation on this. I can span, like, take a 12 foot sidewall, I know I can span 70 feet. Of course. With a three ply column. And that's what a lot of this stuff is, really, is you're just taking what's already been proven and you're yeah. 
hanging it up. You know, there's always, there's always the jurisdictions are like they don't care about that. They want they want an engineer to put their, their right. name on it. So and that's just bless it, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, we don't we don't have to deal with that here. And, yeah. You know, they kind of leave it up to really you know, cool. the builder. So. Yeah. Well, uh, I know on your like on your foundation, you you guys are insulating, especially around your perimeters, yes. and things like that. That's not something we're used to. Yeah. Uh, our frost lines are a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, I would be interested in like talk, like knowing how you guys do that because even like the insulation down the side, it protects us in the summer from the heat driving into our concrete. Because mm -hmm. the reason concrete is such an amazing mm -hmm. like way to heat, like hydronically, it's also yeah. kind of your nemesis if you don't protect from it. Right. So, like I would love to see how you guys kind of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's so much to talk about. To me, it's like there's this whole other world over here, and I'm sure you're feeling the same way. Yeah. But, uh, because of our hybrid systems and the way that we're building the yeah. steel uh, interchanging. Um, of course, I'd be interested to know if that's possible in some of these territories, but uh, some people saying no, you know. Yeah. But it's like, surely there's a way, right? There yeah. are people building steel buildings everywhere. Yeah, they build them up here for a lot of commercial buildings are all steel up here, so yeah. they can be done. I mean, it's pretty cool. Where it's in a colder climate, so we just have to do some different things to them to protect from that condensation. Well, man, Paul, it's been awesome getting yeah. to Thanks meet you and Emily. And, you know, we are just uh, excited about, I think, the, just the conversations sure. that we're able to have just to be here. And that's what all this was about for us to come yeah. up and Absolutely. We'll, make these we're connections. We're definitely going to be seeing each other again, man. Absolutely, buddy. Appreciate all right. It. Appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that now. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Josh Helm. This is Paul Marshall. Mr. Post Frame, we're wishing you all the best. Thanks for watching. Texas Best. <laughs> I like that.